Hi, my name is Melissa Giles, and I have a question on whether or not you know about true faith. So I'm going to start with um, Matthew 13, 31. You'll have to kind of excuse me. I'm kind of blind, so. Okay, so. Um, Matthew 13, 31. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. In his field. And, like, that's no secret at all. Um, it's no secret that we all have just a little bit of faith and that we're taught to, you know, if we repent of our sins, then we're saved, and uh, which is true. Um, but there's more to the whole mustard seed and, um, you know, we, I mean, we do have to believe in Jesus and we do have to repent of our sins for sure. And, um, there's just more to it. So, um, this is like about being sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I'm going to go over here to, um, second Corinthians seven, nine, Seven, seven, eight, nine. Um, as it is, I rejoice uh, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief so that you suffered the loss through us. And, you know, we become sick and tired. We start blaming, you know, God after we repent. And we don't know how to take responsibility for our actions. And, um, the second thing that people do is they start blaming other people after repenting because that's, that's what we're taught. Right. And, um, and you know, I've been through this, I, uh, I've been through this for sure. And so, um, blaming other people for our faults. And then the third thing that we do is they can, we continue to do the un have the ungodly life, thinking that if we repent, that it's okay. And I had that mindset for a long time. Um, you know, doing the next best thing here and there, and not really, not doing, not obeying, not obeying. It's about it's about obeying and uh, repenting of my sin, like every single day. Like Father, please forgive me of my sins. And, um, so that's what we do. Um, why do people do this? Because you have been taught, um, and you have not been taught the whole meaning of the mustard seed. Um, the mustard seed is really, it's like, you know, like we have this desire in ourselves. We have a desire, um, to do something different. And so by repenting, we're going to Jesus Christ and we're repenting of our sins. And yet we continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. And um, there's more to the mustard seed, you know, and it's about faith, right? Um, and so I'm going to go over here to Matthew 13, 32. During my time, uh, my spiritual journey, um, I have been taught a lot um, about faith. And, um, yeah, it's amazing. So we're going to go to 13, 32. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So it is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nest in its branches. And you guys, um, when you have true faith, like Faith is the foundation of the world and the universe, what we know, whatever it is to you. And, you know, when that tree, when, when that tree grows, and you're going to understand this here later, but when our tree grows, cause we have deep rooted, um, stuff, you know, from generation to generation to generation, way, way, way back. And that we're rooted you know, through people, you know, our ancestors and ancestors, like we're all descendants or descendants of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, 
right? And so like every, like their life wasn't always good, you know, and it trickled down to generation to generation to generation. And um, when you start doing right and you start trusting, and I'm going to get into that. Oh, here, I like totally overstep it. But when you start trusting, um, he's showing you, you know, like you're overcoming an addiction, um, some kind of, you know, like sexual immorality, drugs, alcohol, gambling, like you name it, whatever it is for you. And he, he brought you out of that. So now you have a testimony and you can share that testimony, right? And things seem to be going good. You have a calmness in, in self, you know, in your soul. You um, are at peace. You may have joy. You may not have joy. Um, let's see. So with the animals, like, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Um, when, uh, after I was homeless, and this is when I started realizing that, um, God is in control of everything, including animals. And, um, I mean, I have a bee store, I could tell you, um, (laughs) uh, but this one, this one, I could tell you many, but this one particular story, um, I would just got off the street and I was working at this cafe and I had to walk to work and this was in 2016 and, um, It was hot and muggy and whatever in Colorado. And I had to walk through this, like to get to cut through um, so that the walk wasn't so long. I had to walk through this swampy area. And the first time that I walked through there, they had these really big bugs. They were like, I don't even know what they were. Flies, probably they were like horse flies or something like that. And they would come and they would bite me you know, and, um, so I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to have to leave early so I can walk around. There's no way that I can walk through there because it hurt when they bit. And so, um, I prayed about it and I talked to God about it. I was like, I can't walk through here. This is like the quickest way to work. You know, I'm going to have to leave an hour early. And (laughs) so the next day I went down into the swamp and The bugs didn't bite me. And I thought to myself, wait a second here. You know, like, why didn't these bugs bite me? And I prayed, you know, I pray, I say, Father, please don't let these bugs bite me. And he led me to some verse, I'm sure, in the Bible, you know, during my spiritual journey, everything has been led to a verse. And so that brings me to why, um, why I say Uh, about God, you know, like he is in control of everything. And when I prayed about it, like they didn't bite me. And like when one would land on me, I would see it and I would say, you better leave, you know, you better leave, you better leave me alone. And, um, and so it, it would, I mean, and I'm dead serious. (laughs) It was crazy. So, um, with that being said, that is the spiritual life, uh, the spiritual how do you say the spiritual life between, um, man and beast or, you know, animals and man. So in Exodus, it says, concentrate to me, all of firstborn, whether it is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and beast, it's mine, right? So that's Exodus 13, one and concentrate means holy. Um, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but I, I looked it up. It means like holy, you know, it's a holy realm. And he, and he is, he is control. He has, he's in control of every single thing. Um, I can tell you many stories about animals and I'm not going to get into it um, right now, but I can tell you many stories about animals. I promise you. Okay. So going back. So knowing that we have like generational roots, you know, like we are, you know, life happens and we have we have generational curses. We have things that, you know, that we've been through. And, um, uh, as we start overcoming them, he's showing us, we're trusting him, right? You have your testimony, like I said, and we're trusting him and we're believing him and he's teaching us and, and the calmness and you're, you're building that unique, uh, person, the, your unique, your, excuse me, your unique 
personal relationship with him. And it doesn't make me right or wrong. It doesn't make you right or wrong. It's simply a different perspective and um, a personal relationship with your father, our father in heaven, our father in heaven. And he builds that it's important to have a relationship, your own personal relationship with God. And that's how you find purpose. That's how he leads you to what you're, why you're here is building that relationship with him. And that's what makes him so unique. And that's why he makes us unique. Okay, moving forward. So, um, okay, so it's the uniqueness of God's love for us. It's the personal relationship. I'm reading my notes, excuse me. Um, for us in personal relationship with him. No one is right. No one is wrong. It's just a different, you know, it's unique for all of us. So now we're going to go over here to Romans 8. Hang on one second. Where am I at? 11 minutes. Okay, good. Okay, so this is like one of my favorite books. All of them are my favorite books, really. But Romans is really good. Okay, so um, we're going to go to... For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those who he predestined, he also called. So like as I have tribulations and addictions and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, we're called, you know, we are called people to, you know, for his purpose. He wants to show us the purpose, but we must, there's, there's more to that seed. He wants us to have faith and fully trust him. And he foreknew us and he knew what our life was going to be and then brought us to him because we get sick and tired of being sick and tired and we want something to change. Um, and we do, he gives us that power to change it, right? So he foreknew what we were going to do. He gives us the tools to do it. And then, um, and then he starts showing us things that are different because we don't look at like hate, like hating, you know, not loving one another, arguing, fighting, um, all of that kind of stuff. That's all addiction as well. It is, it's, it's you know, addicted to drama, addicted to, it's just the yelling and the fighting and the screaming and, and not loving our neighbor, the judgment and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, we need to leave all of that stuff to God. And when we find the peace with overcoming something, then he tries to take us to a different level, but we don't see it. And, um, and we don't see it. And I don't think that you, um, Sorry, I should turn off my notifications. Um, but we don't see it, you know, and it's a journey, honestly. It's a really, it's a really big journey. So he foreknew us before we were even born. So, so we have to start realizing the importance of why things happen. Your life is what, may, is what makes who you are. Okay, who you are. And you continue down the road of healing through Jesus. You're trusting him um, to keep you sober from addiction or whatever it is. That tiny mustard seed is growing inch by inch, right? It is growing stronger. Don't look at it that way. We don't look at it that way. You don't look at it that way because that's not how you've been taught. Only if you repent of your sins, then you are saved, which is true. But there's so much more. You know, he wants to show you so much more. And the most important thing is that he wants to show you love. All God asks us to do is show unconditional love. Unconditional love. He gives us unconditional love. We should give him unconditional love. When we do that, then he, I can't tell you um, how amazing he is. And by, give it, by doing that, like, if you give him unconditional love, then he gives you so much more. You know, um, the gifts are unbelievable. They are indescribable. So anyway, moving forward. That's what I want to teach. I want to teach you guys what I know from my personal experience in a different perspective. And I want to start it off like this because we are all trees because we have these really deep, thick rooted. If you were to go and look at a tree, just try it. Go and look at a tree and see all of the different lines in it, all of, all of the, 
the bark, the way the bark is, the way the leaves are, the limbs are, even the trunk of the tree. I'm telling you, there's meaning to it. And that's our journey. If you look at it, it's really, truly our journey. Okay, so let's see here. In reality, you trust him and uh, your trust is growing because things are getting better. You have a testimony to give about blessings, the peace that you feel and the calmness in your soul. Um, time goes on. God is showing you more. But you, oh, we already did. So don't see it. Okay. Sorry, I went on a rant. Okay. With that said, it's through the Ten Commandments, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. I'm going to teach you that. I'm going to teach you just that. For now, think about how tiny the mustard seed can bloom. And think about everything that was said in the beginning, right? God gave us eyes to see and ears to hear. And my videos will get better, I promise. Okay, so Mark. Let's see. So I'm going to go to Mark here. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, now, I love this, right? I love this. Here we go. Maybe Mark 8. Oh, here we go. So just think about this. And there's a story behind this story, right? Okay, so. And they came to Bethsaida, um, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged for him to touch him. Like, they're like, Jesus, you have to touch me. Please, please, please touch me. My, this man is blind. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village and when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people. But they look like trees walking. Oh my gosh, you guys. They look like trees walking. So just kind of picture it, you know. Jesus comes, takes takes you out of out of the village, you know, he's basically standing there by himself. He wants to do this in private. And he wants to he wants this person to go in back into the village and tell the people so that they would have faith, right? So that they would believe. He didn't do it in person. Um, and so then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. You guys, faith is a marvelous feeling. And... Um, when we have deep roots, then we have to start plucking them. It's like our brain, we have to change the way that we think. We have to look at the bigger picture, okay? And the bigger picture is, is that it's our purpose, obviously, but to change the way that you think is to be a, the image of God. So it's to love one another, it's to do all of these things, and then you just trust him, you know? You just say, God, I give it to you, and you just feel this joy, and you're giving him unconditional love as he's he's giving you unconditional love as you are giving him unconditional love. So with that being said, um, see you on the next video. Please, if you would like to, comment below. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.